We now switch our focus to the Pettit Senior Hurling Championship. Rory McCarthy and Declan Ruth are now going to preview Sunday's county final. We have the very unusual pairing of St Anne's and the Chamaliers in this year's county final. Would you have predicted that at the start of the year? I'd be a rich man if I did, um, but I, I'd be lying if I said I did, and, and I don't think many in the county uh, would have predicted it. Um, you know, they always had the potential, both teams, but I suppose Owlert had been the dominant force, as we all know, and um, I think everyone was saying at least they'll be in the final. But it's, it's a great thing for Wexford Hurland that there's two teams like the Shells and the Anns in the final, and um, I think the crowds, will, the crowds will turn up in force just to see what sort of fare will be on offer. Very interesting to see the pairings, you know, where they match up, the key battles on the field. And personally, I think that, you know, Dee O'Keefe and, and Clive Lauder will be, will be a massive battle in the final. Yeah, um, I think Clive is probably going to have to try and sit back a little bit in front of Lee Mogg as we'll come on to as a, as a key player for the Anns. So that'll be interesting now if the Anns will adapt a little bit more, maybe try to feed Dee a few short balls to get Clive out of the pocket because Clive likes to sit back in the pocket anyhow, no matter who he's playing. But I think it'll be even more uh, relevant against um, the Anns for him to sit back. But I'm sure their midfielders will sit back accordingly half hours like, like most teams are doing now. But it's definitely a key battle and uh, you know, Dee has a great turn of pace and if he gets by he'll be looking to either go for goal himself or, or bring Lee Mogg and draw the full back. So definitely it'll be a massive battle there. Right. And then at the other end of the field we have uh, you know, Red Barry playing centre back with Dara starts him there the next day. Uh, Mark and Brian Malone, now the two boys obviously know themselves know yeah. each other very well from their football days together. Brian Malone is a very big, strong, physical man. He the more the game went on the last day, the more of an influence he had. Uh, yeah. But to me, if Red is on his game, he really does pull the strings for St Anne's. You know, he's extremely intelligent hurler yeah. in my opinion. Gives a great ball into the forwards. You know, what do you think? What's your opinion on that battle? You Again, know? I, I think I think Red will kind of let Brian do his bit of Roman because um, you know Brian is a great engine and he's a great ability to win the ball, but. I don't think he's, he's, he's there to score an awful lot, you know, so if you let him roam around, he's not going to pop balls over from 65, I don't think it, it hasn't shown to be doing that. There are plenty of other forwards, the other five forwards can do that. So I think Red again will sit back in, you know, in around the 45, protect his full, full back line and say when he does get the ball then he's a great man to spray it around. So again, I think the shells we train, which they are doing all year, is to trying to pick out the man, not to drive long aimless balls down the middle. You know, Bard are trying to hit Banville on the on the 14 or in the square. Yeah. So yeah, Red is, uh, you know, he's a very influential player once he can get the ball. But um, you know, it depends on Brian could make a could make a show of what I'm yeah. saying here, yeah. and he could pop over three or four balls. Well, you've had the experience of Mark and Brian already this year. You know, you went out at the quarter final stage, and as I said before, ye you would have been disappointed that you lost that game. Uh, yeah. How did you, how, what did Brian do on you that day? And I know you had a very influential role you know, that day and you were excellent for the raps, but what did Brian do on you? Did he, did he stay off you? Did he mark you? No, he tried to roam a bit and um, I suppose, you know, 30 or 8 year old, you're always going to be take him on. I'm sure that's the mantra, you know, and he did try to do it a few times, but it, it didn't work out for whatever reason. He, he got caught, his foot and got caught a couple of times. But then the last day, it did work out for him an awful lot more when he carried it and he, and he had a lot more um, successful plays, you know. So I can see it being a little bit more like that. I, don't, I think the day against us, he was probably a little bit off form. So I do think Red is, he can't let him go completely because he's a very, very strong player. And again, two years ago when we played him, he absolutely destroyed us from the half-forward line. Yeah. So I think that's more in line with what he's capable of. And I think Red will have definitely a firm eye on him, but he probably has the legs to maybe, more than me anyhow, to, to get back and yeah. you know, cut him off. You know, Red, Red probably by his own admission didn't have the greatest hour of his life last week. No. You know, he made a few you know, very un-Red-like mistakes. You know, he, yeah. he, he dropped the ball for the free out. He, gave poor, poor David Fogarty a, a hospital pass, you know, yeah. and poor Fogarty now is, is probably going to miss the county final as a result of that. So, you know, yeah. by his own admission, you know, he, he didn't have a good game. I would expect him to have a better game the next day, and I know if Red is on form, I know the Anns will be, you know, a serious force. Yeah. You know, we've mentioned him already, Lee Moog. Uh, in my, again, my opinion, I think, you know, he was the difference between Glen and the Anns yeah. the last day. Even though Dee is their workhorse, he's their playmaker, yeah. Lee Mogg relies on Dee really to give him the ball. If yeah. he gets that ball off Dee O'Keefe, Lee Mogg is very, very hard to handle. Absolutely, there's, there's very few backs we were just discussing, very few backs that can actually um, mark Lee Mogg, you know, and there's very few inter-county backs who were able to mark him this year. I mean, he was a serious asset to Wexford, he's a serious player for the Anns. He's the reason why they're in the county final, because I said the standard uh, of the play from both Glynn and the Anns the last day was very, very poor, bar Lee Mogg and at times as a Dee O'Keefe. But there, it, it was very one-dimensional, and as I said, if 
if he's not on his game or if the, the shells come up with a tactic which you know I'm sure they will be trying to develop one to stop the supply of ball and to maybe double team him when the ball does come in. You know, if he's taken out of the game it's it's hard to see where their scores will come from. Yeah, I agree, I agree hundred percent. Declan, it is very difficult to see any of the other hands forwards contributing the one two or the one three or the two two that he contributes every day. We're coming into winter hurling, Declan. Frees are going to play a big role in this game, you know. Who's free takers on farm on the day? Joe Kelly has been absolutely incredible on the freeze this year. Yeah, in, in every game, and uh, particularly against us that day, and, 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 and moving on to the, the, the semi final, I mean, he, I don't think he missed a free, or if he did, he missed one out of maybe eight or nine, you know. So that's a, that's a, that's a super um, success rate. And then he threw in a couple of sidelines and a goal. He's a massive player for the Shells, and, you know, he's probably this year he's really sort of threw off the shackles and, and proved that he's. He's a match winner, you know, much in the Lee Mogg van for the Anns. So again, there is an awful lot relying on his shoulders, but he seems to be carrying that. And you know, we, we flipped that around to the Anns, as I say, the last day particularly, and they don't seem to have a settled free taker. It was like one guy missed one or two, the next guy gave a try, got over one, he missed one, another guy came in. So I don't think that's the best way to be going into a county final. Shells know. By and large, nine out of ten frees are going to be converted in, in, inside the opposition's half. I don't think the Anns can say with as much certainty that they're going to have um, such a success rate. So, and again, you mentioned winter hurling, you know, slips and pushes, and could be a lot more frees, and it could be a massive factor in the game. Declan, this is the fourth time they'll have met in the last three years. They, they met in the quarter final three years ago, the quarter final two last year. They met in round five this year, but did round five really mean anything to either the two teams? I don't think it made a massive difference to both teams. They were both qualified. I think it was just a matter of who was going to finish above each other. Um, I think the, the quarter-final meetings the previous years are more a reflection of, of the way the county final is going to go in terms of being really, really tight and you know, both teams knowing each other very well. And uh, it's going to be a matter of, you know, again, we may, maybe mention who's going to hit their freeze better on the day or a scrappy goal or you know, a lean wall break and free or whatever factor. But I think it's going to be really tight. Um, I don't think round five was a reflection, as I say, of, of where the two teams are at. I suppose on the semi-final um, performances, you probably think the shells are a little bit better balanced, uh, have a little bit more about them. We mentioned about the Lee Mogg factor. If, if he is taken out of it a bit, you know, will that nullify the, the Anne's threat? But you know, the Anne's don't fear anybody. They're they're a really good team. They've they've got there by merit, and it's a county final, and they'll be going bald headed for it. So can I read between the lines and Declan you're going for shells are you? Very perceptive Mac yeah I am. <laughs> um, I played against them as I said I think they just have a little bit better balance you know but it could depend on the, on the, on the type of day as well as I said, we mentioned winter hurling if it's a wet mucky day windy day that'll you know that'll have another twist on it so you know until the, until the morning of the match I suppose I, I wouldn't give a firm prediction but I do think the shells have just a couple of points in their locker. I agree 100% with that if, if the weather uh, deteriorates, you know, I'd have to say the Anns will have a better chance of winning. Yeah. Uh, but I also thought that, that Ferns would win this county final this year, so you know, any prediction I've had this year has been totally wrong, so I wouldn't like to say who will win because I'm kind of putting the, the kiss of death on either team, but I went with the Anns against Barnhound. I think I'll go with the Anns again the next day. The, the D O'Keefe, the Lee Mogg factor, the Redmond Barry factor, I think the three of them, they're instrumental in where they've got so far, and you know, I think Dara Ryan has you know, a masterstroke by Dara Ryan this year. He's Red, Red Barry captain. Like, you know Red as well as I know Red. He's never, I've never lost, he's never lost playing golf. He never loses playing cards. You know, he, he never seems to lose anything. And I think he is one of the luckiest <laughs> men that we have ever met. And I just see Red Barry lifting that trophy this year. For some reason, I just think he will do it. The man just seems to attract success, anything he does. Yeah, well, well again, why not? I mean, he's, he's a, you know, he, has a, he has the Midas touch, you could say. I mean, they're going to go into that final with ultimate belief. They have beaten the Shells down through the years. Obviously, the Shells have won a couple of recent battles, but that won't mean anything coming into, into this county final as far as the Anns are concerned. You know, David Fogarty is going to be a bit of a loss, but, you know, they've had to deal with injuries as a dual team does and has to down through any successful run. So it, it'll be very little in it. I'm convinced of that, as I said, but I just think the Shells, just, it's just something about them as well this year. You know, maybe Tom Mullally is having a, more of an impact than we think. And I just think they have a style of play and a structure that's going to keep them calm right to the end. But um, as I said, it wouldn't be a surprise at all if the Anns did win. Yeah, I'm the same. Any, any of the two teams can win. I just think that, that the Anns will sneak it. Yeah, don't put your money on the Anns then. <laughs> Split decision from the guys. It seems to be very tough to call this final. Best of luck to both teams on Sunday. And we'll leave you now with some thoughts from around the county.
I think it'll be a very close game. Uh, there's not a lot between the Ans and the Shells. It's great to see two new teams in the final. Um, I, my prediction is uh, the Ans, all because I think they have two or three good, really good forwards, the two, the two O'Keefe's and uh, Ogie McGovern. I think, I, I think the Ans will win the match. Well, uh, to be quite honest, I actually fancy St. Anne's. Uh, I follow them all year, I've been at most of their games, and I find them a very strong physical team with a lot of skillful hurlers in D. O'Keefe and Lee Morgan, of course, Red Barry and Doc and all these lads. Uh, they, they were in the county final there uh, a couple of years ago, and you know they, they have a good balanced team overall. Chevaliers are a fit team, they're a fast team, you know, their half back line are very good. And, you know, they'll be expecting the big boys, Joe Kelly, and especially Banville and all, to stand up to the plate. Uh, it might be a little bit too much with the Chevaliers to pull through the, to, uh, the St Anne's defence but I think overall I think St Anne's might have enough on the day to win it by five or six points it will be an interesting game a tough game but I think the Anne's will be going home the happier team on the day and they should win it by maybe as I said five or six points in the end well, having looked at the uh, two semi-finals, I have to say that uh, the Shelmaliers are probably the hungrier team, and uh, certainly yeah, were, were, were much fresher than any of the three other teams that played on the day in the semi-finals. Uh, I think that the I, I, I would definitely go for the Shells to beat the, the Ans because they have a magnificent half-back line with Clive Lawler, the, 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 the main man in the half-back line, great reader of the game, a very good distributor, and the two midfielders, the two dials, Ryan and Owen, are absolutely. They're probably as solid as a rock and they've been playing exceptionally well the whole year. Uh, right down the middle, the shells are very, very good. They have, they have a strong full back and of course I'm very impressed by the goalkeeper. Um, Brian Malone, a centre half forward, is a, a, t- a tough bit of stuff and he distributes the ball very well. Uh, we probably, the shells will probably need a little bit more from Stephen Bamble. Uh, and <coughs> Joe Kelly, of course, is our main man. Now, they will have problems with Liam Moog and the two O'Keefe's and the Red Barry, of course. Uh, on Man River himself, but I still think that uh, the shells will come out on top. Uh, Joe Kelly is doing very well for uh, Shelmaliers from play, freeze, line balls. He's uh, scoring 8, 10, 12 points every day. And another thing uh, in Shell's favour is the fact that they seem to be finishing out every game very strong. Uh, Quarter final and uh, semi final, they finish strong on both occasions. And uh, it is going to be a plus factor for them that uh, they will always think that uh, if they're anywhere there in the hunt, we can win this in the last 15, 20 minutes. Uh, probably the Anns are maybe the more seasoned team, and uh, they have Doc O'Connor and Red Barry, uh, survivors from the last time they won the championship in 2000, both playing very well at the moment. So I think maybe on the balance of that and a slight edge in experience and the fact that uh, both McGovern and uh, O'Keefe are both seem to be on their game at the moment, probably you would have to give a very, very hesitant vote to the Anns. As a matter of fact, uh, it's a game that we could have our first county final drawing for a long number of years. This house ain't no home.